my son, who's nine years old, not really into football. He knows a couple of the players and whatnot, but he's not really into the NFL like that. After yesterday's loss to the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, he asked me, he said, Dad, what's been going on with the Ravens? So that's how I knew it was all kinds of bad. Team Keep It Clean, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game between the Raiders and the Ravens. Uh, where Baltimore fought, failed by three points, three points, but it was a lot more than just three points that they lost by. Um, Ravens are sitting at 0 and 2 right now, not in a good space, uh, and they got games against some tough teams coming up. Now, while Dallas did just get whooped by the Saints uh, yesterday, um, they are still a team that's going to bring a lot. And you think about everything that Max Crosby did; he was just—he is an amazing player. He is definitely a top three, top four pass rusher defensive end. I mean, you got your T.J. Watts, your Miles Garretts, your, your Micah Parsons, <laughs> your Max Crosby. So you could put him at two. You could put him at one. You, you could make a case for anywhere for him in the top four for sure. But he is a monster. He took over that game like crazy. And you would think going into the game you know who max crosby is you know what he's capable of you know what he can do you know what he's done to your team before when you played him a couple years ago so you would think going into that game all right we got a brand new offensive line our offensive line is still a work in progress let's make sure we take that guy out the game and even if because hey playmakers gonna make plays there's some guys that you can try to take out the game but they still gonna make plays regardless but at least try make a a sincere attempt to remove him from the game, to escort him out the game so he doesn't make as many plays as he possibly – nope, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Max, from start to finish, Max Crosby – and he's amazing. Don't get me wrong. Him, Spillane, and I was talking about it in yesterday's stream that was Spillane. I done had the ultimate respect for him when he was on the Steelers because he was a baller over there. Because I will never forget the game. The Steelers were playing the Titans, and the, the Titans were on the goal line. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry was running, trying to get a touchdown. Spillane said, nope. Boom. Car crash. It was like a car crash. It was a nasty hit, but he stopped Derrick Henry. From that point on, I was, oh, yeah, that dude was a baller. I got the ultimate respect for him. And he showed up in yesterday's game, too. Made a million plays as well. But with the Baltimore Ravens, let, let's just start with some things with coaching. Because we, we talked about it, and we, of course, had, had the video where we talked about if the Baltimore Ravens should fire John Harbaugh. And I wanted to make sure we made that video not as a knee-jerk reaction to the loss against the Raiders, but something that has been a question. It's been a question for years, actually, from a lot of people. Um, but and so and you could check out that video to go over that. But in this game specifically, let's start off with coaching some things that really stood out to me when it came to that. Number one, um, with the right side of the offensive line. And we know there's been times where both guards have struggled, but um, with Falele, he's just it's, it's been rough. It's been really, really rough for Falele. And again, he's playing a brand new position, um, but he just. He can't really move like that. He's he's a giant. He's just like what he's six foot eight, huge, but he can't really move like that. So I feel like that limits what the Baltimore Ravens can do on the offensive line, and that can sort of take away what they do on the offensive line as well. It, it can impact them in a big way. Um, but let's let's start off with Pat McCarry though. Pat McCarry, um, he was obviously struggling against uh, Max Crosby from jump. And I get it, Max Crosby and Max Crosby. He, he's amazing, like a player, amazing player like we said. But um, Pat McCarry was struggling with him from the very beginning of the game. But then when uh, Rosengarten, Ravens rookie, second-round pick, got in the game, he was holding his own against Max Crosby. Now, of course, he was getting help with some chips from Justice Hill and, and Isaiah Likely too. But there, and there was some time where he was one-on-one -on -one with Max Crosby holding his own, doing his thing. He looked so much better against Max Crosby, who is one of the best defensive ends in the league. What did John Harbaugh do? Rosengarten, you're out of there. I'm taking you out. Makari, you back in. Why? Why? Why if something's looking much better? It's looking much better. Why are you completely removing it? Why are you taking it out? And that just really like blew my mind. I'm thinking like, why? Our offensive line 
is a struggle. As we know it's a struggle. We knew going into this season, we expected it to be a struggle. But why would you remove something that was a positive for it? Especially in that in that moment. It just didn't make any sense to me at all. Going back to Daniel Fire lately, we know he's been struggling at guard. This whole thing with Ben Cleveland, it's it's crazy. It is crazy. Harbaugh always talks about I'm gonna play the the best five guys. I I don't think that Falele is one of your best five guys, especially at the right guard position. Ben Cleveland, we've seen Ben Cleveland. We heard rumors about Ben Cleveland that he's not the best at practice or whatnot. But when he plays in the games, that boy could play. He be holding his own. He be doing his thing. So you you got a Lamar Jackson, you got a Derrick Henry, you got these receivers who you believe in. For them to have the ultimate success and the best chance at success, you really got to put the best five out there. The Ravens have not been doing that. They haven't been doing that. And then I was just talking to my guy, Jason, earlier today, and he brought out a good point. I didn't even think about it. He said, the Ravens, they still got Josh Jones, too. I said, oh, my goodness, I completely forgot about that. They got Josh Jones sitting there, and Josh Jones, he played across all the offensive line, too. So he got experience at some different positions. We ain't heard a peep about him. About them even trying to insert him into the starting lineup just to improve things. We ain't heard nothing about that. The Ravens have been, it's almost been like it's been like coaching malpractices. It's crazy seeing it. It's crazy seeing it. And I know it's just been two games, but still, if they're willing to do this whole little rotation thing like they've been doing in these first two games, do it at right guard. And put somebody better at right guard. Something that I hadn't even really noticed. But then when somebody, my guy Jason pointed it out to me and somebody else pointed it out to me too, I hadn't even noticed it that all the Baltimore Ravens' successful runs, they went to the left. They went to the left. And I was like, oh, oh seeing it, I remember, yeah, Derrick Henry broke up. When we saw that old Derrick Henry, we got that old thing back, that boy did the, the stiff arm and all that. I said, oh, let's go, baby. But all of it was to the left side. All of it. Then he had broken up. Every, it all went to the left side. I said, oh, man. That makes sense, though. Because you got Tyler Linderbaum that's in the middle. So he can either, either go to the left or the right. But then you got Voorhees, work in progress. But then you got Ronnie Stanley on that side. Like, oh, okay. The experienced one. But then if you look at the right side, you got Tyler Linderbaum who's working from the middle. Okay, he can go left or right. And then you got Daniel Farlele. And then you got Pat McCurry. So, yeah, th that, that makes sense why the left side was having all of that success. But the, the way that they've been deploying their personnel, it just, it has not been the best. It really hasn't. And then, let's get to the challenges real quick. And I would, we talked about them in yesterday's video, but with this game, let's talk about the challenges. Um, the challenges, well, they were bad. They were, they were very bad. And they were just, you might as well have just called a timeout. If you're going to challenge those things, you might as well just call a timeout. Because it was just a waste. The Zay Flowers drop, it was not a catch. Live, it looked like a catch at first, but then when they showed the replay, oh, it hit the ground. Just like that. It hit the ground. And then I saw, I saw somebody who was like, oh, no, Harbaugh, he was just listening to the crowd. He was listening to everybody in the crowd. And Shannon Sharp, <laughs> Shannon Sharp replied to that person. He was like, all right, if, if, he wanna listen, if you want to listen to the crowd, then you're going to find yourself in the crowd very, very soon. But um, that, it was just a bad challenge. It didn't make any sense. And I'm thinking, like, man, what are the guys up in the booth? What are they seeing to, to advise Harbaugh, hey, challenge? Like, what, what, what are we looking at? Did they not show a replay on the big screen? Maybe they didn't because maybe they felt, maybe since it's a home team too, maybe they're like, all right, we knew it wasn't a catch, so we can't show the replay on the big screen. I don't know because I wasn't there at the game. But it was just a bad challenge. Waste of a timeout. Waste of a challenge, waste of a timeout. Then the second challenge, Devontae Adams catch. Live, it looked like a catch. With the replay, it looked like a catch. Then they, conf they confirmed, oh, yeah, it's a catch. It stands. And that ended up wasting the second half timeout that came back to bite the Ravens late in the second half. Because we remember, uh, the Raiders were in field goal territory. They were running the ball. It was first and 10. They ran the ball for nine yards. It was second and one. There were two minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. And it just felt like the Raiders, they had a lot of momentum. So I personally, I just felt like you should not have called a timeout there. I get what he was doing. He was probably thinking like, all right, we call a timeout here because you only got two timeouts left. We call a timeout here. And it was a second and one. And then we hopefully get a stop to force third and one. And we call another timeout. And then we got third and one. We stop him again. And we got the two-minute warning. That's probably what he was thinking. But the way I was thinking, the way the game was going, 
I just felt like the Raiders, they were going to get that first down for sure. And then I was hoping that the Ravens would. Then they would stop them on their next set of downs. But, hey, it, it is what it is. Now, one thing I will say, well, I was not mad at Harbaugh for it at all uh, because – it just it was one of them plays that we've seen work a lot of times. Uh, I, I know a lot of people complain, all right, we, we got Derrick Henry. We got this Derrick Henry bruising running back and whatnot. Why would on that third and one where they lined up Charlie Cola under center and they had Derrick Henry and Ricard behind him and whatnot, people are like, why would they not use Derrick Henry right there? I ain't having no problem with that play. But Derrick Henry flinched. He flinched, ended up being a false start. Ravens got backed up, so that ended up failing. But I, I didn't have a problem with that play. We've seen Mark Andrews do that quite a few times, and it's worked. There was a time where it didn't work, but we've seen Mark Andrews do it. And, uh, no problem with that. But um, so, uh, yeah, I, I was cool with that one. Um, but, yeah, then there was, uh, and I guess this is sort of Harbaugh and Todd Munkin. We saw Zay Flowers. First half, oh, going off. Involved like crazy. Okay, shout out to Zay Flowers doing this thing. Let's go, baby. Second half, you don't hear from him. You don't hear from him. You don't hear nothing from him. It's like, hey, what, what, what happened to Zay Flowers? Is he still even playing in the game? What's, what's going on? It's, it's just crazy. It's like Ravens will, it, it's like they, they're like a machine that they'll get something going. They'll get something rolling and whatnot, but then something else will break down. And it's like, hold up. It, it, it's, just, it's, it's just so weird to me sometimes. Now, um, let's talk about the refs. And we're going to get to the offense and the defense, and we're going to get to all that, too. Let's talk about the refs. In this game, the refs, they were horrible. I guess maybe this, these AFC West refs, I don't know. But the game against the Chiefs was officiated terribly. This game, oh, my goodness. It was bad. The, um, the face mask that they said was a face mask where Matt Abike got a sack on Minshew, and he grabbed them right here. But they said face mask. Live, I thought it was a face mask. When it, when it was live, during the, I, oh, I said, oh, no, it's a face mask. But then they showed the replay, and it wasn't. He was right down here. And they looked at it. They looked at the replay. They did not pick up. The, they still called face mask. I said, wow. It was such a terrible call. And then the one that was even worse where I know Brandon Stevens had his struggles in yesterday's game. I know Paul Lover, he did too. But with Brandon Stevens on this particular play, the pass interference, what they call defensive pass interference on Brandon Stevens. Such a terrible call. Such a terrible call. They even said it in New York. They said, no, I, I, I wouldn't have thrown that flag. That was such a terrible call, and that changed so much for the Baltimore Ravens. It changed so much because that moved the ball all the way to the goal line since it's a spot foul. Brandon Stevens didn't do anything wrong, in my opinion. Devontae Adams ain't doing anything. They were both like little doing some little hand checking and whatnot. But it was just, that was supposed to be a no call. That was a big game changer. Huge game changer. It, and that was that was tough, man. That was very deflating. And then um the then the uh the Raiders, they they played it smart because right after that they did a play action uh to Devontae Adams uh for the touchdown. Marlon Humphrey was on him, but obviously he couldn't do anything. Um, just and Gardner Minshew, man. Give credit to Gardner Minshew because he came into Baltimore again two years in a row. Beat the Ravens by three when the Ravens are favored heavily over whatever team he's playing for. Last year was the Colts. This year is the Raiders. And I was expecting this year. I'm like, oh, yeah, Ravens about to have a bounce back game. They had that close, tough game against the Chiefs. Oh, they got it. This, this. Oh, yeah, let's go. Nope. They sure didn't. They sure did not. But give credit to Gardner Minshew, man. He came in there, did his thing. Especially for the, 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 the slow start that they got off to. Because the Ravens' defense, they were doing their thing. They, they, they had so much life. They were a lot. Adafi away. Adafi away. First, I think first play of the game. What, he got a sack. Adafi away. He had, again, he had his two, three sacks. Um, Kyle Vinoy, he had his two sacks. Marlon Humphrey, he had a pick. Roquan Smith, I don't know what's been going on with Roquan Smith. I don't know what's been happening with him. These past two games, ooh, it, ain't, it ain't been looking too good for him. But so I don't know what it is. Well, Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, um, we did see him being used a bit more as the old Kyle Hamilton. Uh, last week against the Chiefs, he wasn't being used 
in the normal way. But that's the Chiefs, so I was like, okay, cool. But in yesterday, we did see him blitzing a couple of times. We saw him as a pass rusher. We saw him in the slot. We saw him dropping back and whatnot. Um, but is Kyle Hamilton still dealing with something? Is something bothering Kyle Hamilton? Because he just, I don't know, something, something seems like it could be a bit off. But that's something I think uh, that's important to watch for. Um, we'll see how he does against the Cowboys. See, see if we hear anything in practice this week. But we'll see how he does against Dallas. Um, who else? Uh, yeah, Michael Pierce. He had made a nice play. Ravens defense, Matt PK, like the, the, the Ravens defense for a while. They were holding it down. They were holding down the fort. But it's, it's crazy because it seems like with Ravens defense, they could be holding it down for the longest. They could be taking care of business for the longest. Then when it's like when the offense, they finally make a play. Ravens defense is like, oh, nah, we straight. Let's, let's take a little break. Then they give up something. It's, it's, it's always the craziest thing. Um, yeah, yeah, that is, I don't even know what to say, man. Don't even know what to say. Shout out to them for holding it down at the very end to give the Ravens offense one last chance, though. They gave Ravens offense one last chance, but Ravens offense came up just short. And it was like they were right there, so close. Now, um, the Ravens offense, uh, where do we start? Lamar Jackson um, in yesterday's game definitely wasn't running as much from the previous game, but it was a lot of the same issues. And what I mean with issues uh, the lack of protection. Uh, we all have seen a picture. I'm sure you've seen it by now with Lamar, where he was getting sacked by Max Crosby, and he was just looking. He was just looking like he had the ball in his hand, in his right hand, he was just looking. And you see his eyes, and it's just like, oof. He just, he just looked fed up, man. Just looked fed up with uh, the lack of protection that he's getting. And again, this was, we all talked about it. He said this was risky business by Eric DaCosta. Sending out that offensive line going into the season. Very risky business. We, of course, would hope that it would work out and pay off. So far, it has not, though. Uh, and it impacts everything in a big way. Um, but with Lamar Jackson, this game, uh, if we look at his numbers, um, and again, numbers don't tell the whole story. Uh, when you think about how he he does have the one touchdown pass. He threw the touchdown pass to Zay Flowers. Nice pass, nice catch. Shout out to Zay Flowers doing a tribute to Jacoby Jones. Um, but then you think about the interception. And with the interception, um, yeah, he did. He has an interception on his stat sheet, but he did not throw an interception, if you get what I mean. And Rashad Bateman, um, he just dropped it. Like straight up He just dropped it And Robert Spillane Who again is a monster He's a beast He just made a play on it That was it He made a play um, With Rashad Bateman Initially when he dropped that Initially I was worried But then I did say oh, he, He's still gonna get another chance And he did get another chance Cause he, he got another catch After that But it, it's, it's those plays And see what's crazy Is it's tough It's such a tough spot To be in I think for Lamar Jackson, for Rashad Bateman, it's tough because I'm sure, because Lamar got a great memory. I mean, he's a quarterback of the team. He knows his players and whatnot. With Zay Flowers, Zay gets a lot of opportunities. He gets a lot of targets. Well, not in the second half of the game yesterday, but normally he gets a lot of targets, gets a lot of action his way. So he has a lot of chances, to, a lot of opportunities to make plays. He catches most of them. He'll have some times where he does drop, but he catches most of them and he'll do whatever. But with Rashad Bateman... It's different because with Rashad Bateman, his dro any drop that he has is going to be blown up that much more because he does not get nearly the same amount of opportunities as a Zay Flowers. So Lamar could possibly look at it like, hmm, if he dropped that, uh, I don't know if I really want to go his way. I don't know if I really want to look his way. I don't really know if I want to throw him the ball. But then it's, it's tough because with Rashad Bateman, he's like, man. I had one catch earlier. Oh, now I dropped it. Man, I don't know if I'm going to get anything else after this because I don't really get that many opportunities in the first place. So it's tough. So it's just one of those things. I feel like they're they going to have to work through. They're going to have to work through. And with more opportunity, uh, with more chances, I think you still got to get because that's, that's still your receiver. He's still a receiver on his team. He ain't going nowhere. So he's still going to need them opportunities. Somebody else. 
who could use some opportunities uh, are tight ends. I thought, likely, I thought he was going to have a day yesterday. I really did. Um, but Isaiah Likely, uh, he had two catches for 26 yards. Mark Andrews had four catches for 51 yards. So they both were involved a little bit, but not really too much. There was one pass where uh, Lamar Jackson, I guess he thought Mark Andrews was going to keep running, but Mark Andrews had slowed up a little bit, so the ball sailed, uh, and they just missed. That would have been a big chunk play, too. That would have been really, really nice, but just a little miscommunication uh, with the both of them. Um, but with uh, with the tight ends, with just the receivers in general, I mean, Zay Flowers, seven catches for 91 yards. Eight of those, excuse me, six of those catches, I believe, came in the first half. I think he had like six for like 83 in the first half. And I remember looking at the number like, man, that's crazy. That's like, that's crazy for a Baltimore Ravens receiver to have all of that in a first half. Whoa. But again, he only got one catch in the second half. So, yeah, maybe the, the, maybe the, 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 the Raiders, they did a lot of work to take him out. Maybe the Ravens, they did a lot of work to take him out too. <laughs> uh, Rashad Bateman had three catches for 40 yards. Nelson Aguilar, he had one catch. Derrick Henry. I appreciated, I appreciated how they Lamar threw a pass to Derrick Henry. Um, I, I think it's been very important. There was a lot of predictability yesterday in yesterday's offense with these Baltimore Ravens. Um, but they did start. There were some spots where they got better at not being so predictable with Derrick Henry. And I think that's very, very important. If you're going to have success in this offense, you cannot be predictable. Because early on in the game, when Derrick Henry was in there, they were running. Raiders were all over it, all over it, just about every time early on. But then Ravens started switching it up a little bit. They had Lamar in the shotgun. Derrick Henry was lined up next to him. Lamar would fake it to him, keep it, throw it to somebody else. They had times Lamar was lined up in a pistol or a single back, and Lamar snapped the ball, fake it to Derrick Henry, keep it, throw it to somebody else. And I like that because that opens things up. And that doesn't make the offense so one-dimensional when 22 is back there. Because, again, that's something that we talked about that I was scared of when Baltimore Ravens first signed Derrick Henry. I did not want them to be predictable. Because with the Titans, he was very predictable. Even though he still got his yards, he still got to put in that work. But it was very predictable. You saw Derrick Henry out there next to Ryan Tannehill, you knew they were running. You saw Derrick Henry come off the field, you knew they were passing. It was like that a lot with the Baltimore Ravens, too. Overall, they got to change that. Got to change that. And yet find ways to get him involved in the passing game, too. I loved it. Ravens came out uh, with four wide receivers. or well, Sometimes it would be a tight end mixed in there, too. But they came out with four, 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 uh, four pass catches. And Derrick Henry would be in the backfield with Lamar. And then they sent Derrick Henry out, too. I said, there we go. There we go. Change it up. Switch it up, man. I love that. So they just got to keep doing that. It's, it's super, super important because you, you just you can't afford to be predictable. I mean, you see, <laughs> you owing two. <laughs> what can you afford right now? You can't afford to lose again because woof. Because um, I know, hey, history meant to be broken. But history, when you will start off owing two, it ain't looking too good for you to make the playoffs. But this Baltimore Ravens team, they, there's, there's no way, right? That they wouldn't make play. There's no way, right? There's, there's, there's no way, right? So again, hopefully this is them just getting all the ugly stuff, all the bad stuff out of their system early, because we we used to them. They again, we always know they have like two to three games every year that's lost due to coaching. Every single year, it, it never fails. Now players do share some of the blame, but it's definitely every single year two to three games where coaching cost them. There's going to be some other games where the players, they cost them. It goes hand in hand, but every year, without fail, it's always at least two games where they lose due to coaching. So hopefully this is the last one. I'm sure they got another one in their system somewhere, but hopefully they can get it all out during the regular season. And they can do good enough to where they make the playoffs and they go on. Uh, but anyway, I don't think we even need to talk about playoffs yet. RG3 made a great point yesterday. In a video that he made, RG3 said that with the Baltimore Ravens, he said so many fans, so many people feel like, all right, Ravens in the regular season, they ain't worried about it. What are you going to do in the playoffs? But he said with Ravens, they, they can't even think like that right now because they got to take care of business in a regular season to even get to the playoffs. And that's true. That's true. 
Like fans right now, I don't think fans are th- anything about down the road right now for playoffs. Cause you can't, you can't. <laughs> you keep this up, playoffs. We're gonna be having that same legit more conversation, man. And we don't want to have that conversation. So Ravens need to tighten up. Um, but yeah, this they they got to get better, man. They got to get better. That's uh, what else is there left to say about them? It's nothing. And it's like it, it's it's small things here and there that you just gotta fine tune. It's the little stuff that you gotta work on to get this team to where they need to be. They got too much talent to be looking like they be looking. They really do. It's embarrassing. They they got they they got too many good players to be looking the way that they've been looking. It, it should not be like that. I know offensive line. Like thinking about offense alone, I know offensive line obviously got a lot to do with it. But you you got Lamar Jackson, man. You got a cheat code at the quarterback position. A cheat code, a literal cheat code. It's not fair. Lamar Jackson is not a fair player. And that's the offense of that. You got Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. You got a Pat Ricard too. So you got you got Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Both of them. It's you got a Zay like it is offense should not be looking like that. Look at the Raiders. Like if you look at the Raiders, you look at their offense, look at their quarterback, Gordon Minshew. You look at that tight end, Brock Bowers. That man was going off yesterday. Going off. What was 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 one of the worst parts about yesterday's game is why again that's why we, we've been having a lot of conversations about coaching obviously the players got to play too but co- it starts with coaching because that's the top right there but we knew going into the game max crosby max crosby max crosby christian wilkins but christian wilkins i feel like he did a lot of dirty work yesterday but max crosby did a he did the dirty and the pretty stuff because christian wilkins he's gonna clog some stuff up max crosby he, oh yep let me go get these sacks real quick I'll be right back, Christian. Let me go get a sack real quick. Oh, I'll be back. I'll be, I'll be back, Christian. Let me go get this tackle for a loss real quick. I'll be right back, Christian Wilkins. Let me go swat this pass down real quick. That dude was everywhere on everything. But you would think that the coaching, they would put in a better strategy to stop him. And again, like I said earlier, I know playmakers, they're they going to make plays. That's, that's what playmakers do. Because I'm sure plenty of people put in strategies to stop Lamar Jackson. But they say, you know what? We ain't got to do as much work. The Ravens, they're going to make it easy for us. They're going to make it easy for us. So we ain't got to put as much work to stop in Lamar because Ravens, oh, they got it taken care of. They, it shouldn't be like that. Then again, on the flip side, you think, all right, who should the Baltimore Ravens have to stop on Raiders offense who are their best playmakers oh one of the best receivers in the game Devontae Adams let's try to take him out the game let's make the other receivers work for but throughout the game you kept seeing Devontae Adams one-on-one you ain't see him doubled you ain't see them try to really take him out one-on-one with Brandon Stevens with Marlon Humphrey and I get it yeah you want to trust your cornerback still okay cool when you saw the, the struggle from jump, should have made adjustments. Should have made adjustments. Devontae Adams was a problem the entire game. And again, I, playmakers make plays. But where was the effort to really try to stop a Devontae Adams? And I'm not saying that every single, try to, every single playmaker you try to stop, you're going to be successful. Because, hey, stuff happens. That old saying from, I think, Mike Tyson, everybody got a plan till they get punched in the mouth. Ravens got punched in the mouth so many different ways yesterday. You think about the rookie, rookie, tight end, Brock Bowers. I would think, all right, he had a bunch of catches uh, in, in last week's game uh, against, uh, I think they played, what, the Chargers last week. He had a bunch of catches in that game. He was doing his thing. All right, hey, you no, know he's a rookie, but still, watch, watch, watch out for him. That boy, hey, he could play some football now. Nope. That boy went off against the Ravens. Went off against the Ravens. Did his thing. So I just feel like. A lot of things that, in my opinion, are obvious that the Ravens just don't do. I feel like, again, two people on offense and two people on defense that it would be obvious that the Ravens should try to focus in on, hone in on. Devontae Adams, excuse me, Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers, 
Max Crosby, uh, Max Crosby, Spillane, Max Crosby alone. But Spillane, Christian Wilkin, but Max Crosby alone. He ain't got to, not to say he ain't got to worry about nobody else, but boom, him. But they didn't do it. And, th and then again, what made it worse, especially for Max Crosby, it's like you found something that was working and you stopped it. That's what makes it so frustrating. You found something that worked and you decide, mm -mm, nope, cut it out. Get Rosen Garden out of there. That's why Ravens fans are so frustrated because the Baltimore Ravens, they just they, they, they don't do the obvious things and they make life harder for themselves consistently. They make things more difficult than they need to be consistently. One of the Baltimore Ravens biggest issues, uh, not last year, but it, it, this just reminded me of it. But one of their biggest issues uh, a couple years back was when they got into the red zone, they just would get cute. They would try to get fancy. They would try to do too much. And they will be struggling in the red zone. Struggling. They can't punch it in. They can't get touched out. Man, what are they doing? Guess what they did last year? They cleaned it up. They didn't get all cute. They didn't get pretty. They did the obvious thing. They were straight up, straight forward. And when they got in the red zone, especially when they got around the goal line. He said, all right, we ain't going to play no games. We ain't going to get fancy. We ain't going to try to do no trick play. Gus Edwards, just run it in. We got a fullback. We got Gus Edwards. Just run behind Pat Ricard. Get in the end zone. And they did that, and it worked like crazy. Their red zone success went up like crazy. Simple fix. Not overthinking it. Not going crazy. Oh, what do we got to do? What should we do? What's the problem? What's the Simple fix. But see, the Baltimore Ravens, when, when there's a lot of stuff that are simple fixes, the Ravens decide to, you know what, let's try to make stuff difficult. Got to stop doing that. Got to stop doing that or else it's going to be the same result over and over and over.